Hello, hello, hello. How's everybody doing? Good. It goes like this. So the video starts out talking about Alvin, who's had a negative interaction with NYPD. Is that interaction common, or that is that a normal interaction with a police officer? It's common. It's common, but not normal. That's a great answer. So there's several issues that were raised in that video. Police officer Bradley talk about event specific. Who said this is a normal interaction? We're here today to know your rights, right? Basically, you're here to find out what type, how to interact with police officers when you're stopped in the 250 uh, within the context of your home or if you're driving a vehicle. So in an interaction as Alvin had, what would be the normal reaction? What sh how should Alvin have reacted? How should the police officer react? I teach at BMCC in the criminal justice program. We have a joint program with um, John Jay School of Criminal Justice. And most of our students want to be law enforcement officers. So what we're hoping that they take away from this um, program is basically how to um, interact with the public in a more um, comprehensive manner. So that they're, we teach not just criminal law, but we teach also, we integrate public policy into our curriculum. We want our students to be well-rounded um, as potential um, law enforcement officers. Um, specifically, a lot of them want to be uh, police officers. We want them to see the public. We want them to see communities. We want them to see individuals when they interact with people. And so that's one of the great takeaways, especially in light of, um, as you mentioned, what happened in Ferguson, just so overall around the country. Um, a lot of these issues that the um, cities are confronting. So we want them to be well-rounded. And what I found useful about this presentation was that I know my rights from when I got stopped by a police officer. Like, I know what to do, what can I not do, what can the officer also do and not do when I'm, I'm being stopped by them. So um, he indicated that the police department has a responsibility to reduce crime, right? So they have a responsibility to our communities. They have indicated that that's what they're doing when they're stopping people around randomly on the street. What is the standard? One of the biggest takeaways that I would like the students to um, take from this particular program is just the way that they interact with police officers, that they should be courteous, uh, respectful when they interact with police officers, and to really be firm. They should know what their rights are. We, uh, we, as we spoke earlier, we articulated where these rights come from, the U.S. Constitution. They have a right to um, the Fourth Amendment against unreasonable searches and seizures, Fifth Amendment, which is the uh, right uh, against self-incrimination, and we're asking our students, so we teach our students students to actually um, to be able to assert those rights in a respectful manner when they interact with the police officers. <laughs> for about 10 years. I was at SVA, I also went to the School of Visual Arts from undergrad for fine arts. I took a black history class and my professor put on a film that basically introduced me to the Black Panther movement. I had no idea that such a powerful movement had happened during my parents' lifetime. And also, I couldn't understand how the things that they were standing up for were basic rights that so many people still don't have today. Basically, we had this meeting, everybody kind of said what they wanted to see in the mural, right? It was just a group of people just like us sitting inside of a room. And then after they spoke about, we created a list of words, including justice, 
rights, um, self-empowerment, anti-police brutality, et cetera. And then I had them each try and think of an image that could go with each word. And based on um, that brainstorm session, we came up with this design. So we have, again, a group of people physically protesting from the foreground, the silhouettes. In the background is from a photograph of um, individuals that were actually walking. I photographed these people that were protesting in Harlem about um, Trayvon Martin. So that got taken from that. This, the young girl is inspired by Emery, du Emery Douglas' style. He's an artist that basically, he was like the visual representation of the Black Panther movement. Art can be used as a tool for a number of things. I think as an act of protest, as an act of resistance, um, an act of rebellion, and also as a tool for therapy. I think that so many times when tragedies like what happened to Mike Brown and Ferguson or any uh, police brutality case where we have a victim that is no longer living, um, we see that their families are pushed into these situations where they have to reach out for help, they have to cover the cost of a funeral, they have to speak in front of the media while they're hurting. Primarily what I'm learning is that art, the process of making art is a, a healing act. I use my work as a way to stand up against the things that I don't believe in. Art is a way to give voice to those people that can't speak up for themselves or those people who are trying to speak up for themselves but are only being heard by a certain audience. I think that by um, using art as a tool, I reach people that come into an event, if I have an event or an artist talk, they come in because they like art or they know me or they happen to be in the city that day and they leave with so much more knowledge and so um, that's why I think that art can be used for multiple reasons, uh, especially especially in combat to some of the issues that we face. So now are you wrapped up? Are you ready for our spoken word event? Right? Part two is the open forum for you all to express yourselves, right? So this is a forum for you to express how you feel about the recent events. The first piece I made, I call it, I think it's crazy. I think it's crazy that if I got shot by a cop, he wouldn't even serve time on the rock. I think it's crazy that if I lose my life to a person with a badge, he wouldn't even get a strike. I think it's crazy that we got kids dead, parents crying because their children caught it in the head or the side. Anywhere in the anatomy, we multiply them, we die no by to our families. And the crazy things, a man behind the badge, a father and a husband, a son, a brother, an uncle and a cousin, a nephew that only few will step to and I stress through. Cause our people lost each day. I can name at least 10 people that haven't seen 28, 25, or even yet 20. I know they're laughing to themselves and the matter isn't funny and the judge is playing dummy. No indictment or conviction. This can't be life I'm living. I think nah, this is fiction. But the truth is, it's real life. Cops can pull a trigger and kill whenever they feel like. And that makes me feel like nothing can be done. I can't imagine what it's like losing a daughter or a son. I can't imagine what it's like taking that special someone. Officer, please don't shoot. My hands are up. That decision is a dumb one. I'm trying to make a difference how we see them and how they see us. We got out 150 years ago from slavery. Now free us. The inspiration for my pieces are from real life events that I've gone through and that I've seen firsthand experience. You know, I do believe that we can, we can make a change because this generation, we're, we're making thousands of changes every single day, you know, in every type of way, you know, whether it comes to technology, um, the way people, you know, do anything. And it should definitely be, like, you know, the criminal justice should definitely be affected by us because we're, we're the next generation that's gonna be obtaining these jobs, criminal justice jobs that, you know, have to do with the courts and the judges and, you know, police officers and anybody else that has to do with law enforcement and the criminal justice system. So I believe that definitely we can make an impact on what happens, especially if we set our mind right. So, like, on that, I believe that we definitely can make an uh, impact. Thank you very much.
having a criminal justice program, we felt that we needed to address this criminal justice issue, right? Um, we have many students who want to be police officers, and um, I know from my experience, I'll have students say, well, I wanted to be a police officer, but in light of the recent events, I don't know if I want to continue to be one. And so we felt that we needed to have um, open dialogue about what's happening and really have both sides express, you know, what's going on, not just, you know, we hate police officers because that's not what it's about. It's about what is happening in our criminal justice system, what's happening to our young people of color, and how can we address it, and how can we have students express themselves about that. Some of our faculty, adjunct and otherwise, are police officers or have been involved in law enforcement. So they hear it, they know it, and I think that sometimes the students don't realize they have a voice and, and they can you know, show their side. And I think we, we have an obligation to be able to provide that forum for them.